I was <laughs> so happy with this because it was just absolutely mental. Like, there was no reason for me to get anything from the game. My opponent, similarly, didn't really deserve to get anything from the game. We both played absolutely horribly. But that's the reality of chess at this level. Like, it's not as good as you think. Today's game is far too good not to share. Not good in the sense of accuracy or playing particularly well, but good in the sense of absolute chaos. And you're going to want to see this. There are so many bad moves and so many amazing moves all played in the same game in a three minutes plus two blitz match against an opponent rated almost 2300 which is pretty damn impressive right so let's get into it i have the black pieces and we start with d4 knight f6 knight c3 my opponent goes for what i assume is a london setup and i play c6 which the computer already thinks is a mistake because of e4 but I actually mixed up my move order. I intended to play c6 on the first move after d4 and play a Slav. And because I've been playing the King's Indian for so long, I kind of just automatically played knight f6. And then realized, oh, no, I'm supposed to be playing the Slav. So, that's what happened. Bishop g5, d5, e3, e6. I play e6 because I don't really want to get my bishop out first although this is completely viable because i i kind of don't mind blocking my bishop in this is like a semi slav sort of setup where the bishop's blocked in behind the pawn chain but at some point you'll probably play b6 and fianchetto or maybe push for an eventual e5 after moves like bishop d6 queen c7 knight d7 or supporting an e5 push and then releasing the bishop not every piece has to be the star of the show. So e6, e4, bishop e7. And, well, apparently I should have played queen b6, but uh, not, not really the kind of move I want to play. Just because it gives this as a possibility, and I'm not really a fan of that. I assume after bishop takes, you can probably take on b2 first, and it's good for black, but... I don't want to get into that. I just want to play solid chess. E5, drop the knight back. And my opponent goes h4. And I was like, whoa. What happens if I take? If takes, takes, takes. I was expecting knight f3 attacking my queen. And if I drop my queen back to a square like g6, then moves like bishop d3 look really scary. And my king side is really looking weak with all white's pieces aimed at h7 i didn't want to go into this so i decided to ignore my opponent and go c5 which is the best idea and after takes i should have played king takes king takes e7 what because the problem is after queen takes my opponent has knight b5 and he threatens knight c7 and knight d6 Knight ninety six coming with check, and knight d seven attacking the rook and the king. I missed that, and the reason king takes is better is because knight b five. You can go a six, and if knight d six, you just ignore it. You just take, and if queen takes, you're better because you're winning e five, and then once e five falls, the knight will probably have to retreat insane stuff i did not see this i took with the queen knight b5 and i was like look okay i'm gonna lose the rook i considered moves like knight a6 but knight d6 king f8 and i thought that my position was absolutely horrible i can't get this rook out and i'm so cramped i'd rather just give up the rook and that's what i did i Whoa, this is a move? Oh, knight takes e5 with a discovered attack. And if knight takes a8, then we take on d4. And if queen takes, then knight c6. Didn't see that. I took on d4 first. And after knight takes a8, I took on e5. 
Oh, it's the same move order. We just transpose, because if queen takes, knight c6, it's the exact same position. Okay, no, it's fine. It's fine. My opponent went f4 here. And if I retreat the knight to somewhere like g6, I was worried about moves like g3. And although the computer is saying e5 is winning, I thought it completely locked my knight out of the game. And if I move to somewhere like c6, then this knight wanted to go to c6, so that's not great. And if I go to d7, then this knight can escape via c7. So, I played queen b4 check. And my idea is, if c3 is played, I take it. And you can't take the knight because I have a discovered check on the king and attack the rook with the pawn. And if you play queen d2, then I take on b2 with an attack on the rook. And after the rook moves, then I can bring the knight in. Look at squares like e3. Queen takes d4. Queen, queen takes c2. And I'm down a rook, but I'm getting a ton of pawns. Knight c6 is going to come with a tempo. And the white king is looking really scared. The computer gives it as equal, even though I'm down a rook. But I do have three pawns. Mental. Absolutely mental. My opponent went king f2. Here, I went knight g6. I wasn't worried about g3, because I thought I had e5, which... I'm pretty correct, but I did miss the idea of h5. And if I take on f4, g3, and the knight is trapped. I guess I have this, but this this isn't enough. The king is still safe, just about. My opponent also didn't see this. He went knight c7. And by the way, the game review on this game is horrible. Like, there's 11 mistakes... For me, six mistakes for him, seven misses for him, six misses for me, two blunders from him. We have three great moves between us, though, so that's something. But horrible game. <laughs> it's so exciting, though. Knight c7, and my opponent looks to try and escape via b5. So I play a6, trying to stop knight b5, and the knight has no way out. It is still stuck. So, if I can win this knight, I'm happy, because I'm down an exchange, but I won a couple pawns for my trouble, and my opponent's king is really exposed, so I'm confident that I can get something out of this game if I can win that knight. But, I can't spend too long going after it, otherwise my opponent's going to blast me on the king's side. So my opponent goes bishop d3. And gives me f4. And the problem is now, g3 is ineffective because I can take on d3 and escape that way. So knight takes f4, knight e2. Here I didn't really want to take either piece. Because if I take the bishop, I get rid of my most active piece. And then look at my remaining pieces, they're horrible. And I still haven't won this knight back. And if I take on e2... And queen takes. And this is looking pretty scary. Like, I'm struggling to get pieces over to the king side to protect my king. And, you know, I, 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 I can't play a move like queen takes b2. Because that's just way too much. Like, I'm giving my opponent too much time here. So, I find the best move in the position. I'd encourage you to try and find out, actually, because it is important to be accurate in these types of scenarios. Bear in mind, I've got 45 seconds here because I spent so long. <laughs> Once I realised I was losing a rook, I was like, oh, I really need to find some counterplay. I find queen d6, which attacks the knight and defends my knight. So if my opponent takes on f4, then I can take on f4 with check. Queen f3, or king g1, doesn't really matter. And then I can retreat and take the knight. And I've got natural development with moves like knight c6, like e5, like bishop e6. I can start a bit of a pawn storm down the centre as well and make use of my three extra pawns. 
that I have for the exchange, especially because they're so mobile, it's a really good advantage for me here. So my opponent is finds the most accurate move, which is knight a8. Going back into the corner, he still has no escape. Oh my god, he still has no escape. These arrows are horrible. But I also can't win the knight. I'd have to somehow get my rook to jump over my bishop and my knight, which isn't going to happen, obviously. So I go knight d7. We have takes, queen takes f4 check, king, queen f3, and queen b8. And now, the, the reason I played knight d7, these arrows, man. The reason I played knight d7 was to control the b6 square to cut off the knight's escape. So h5. I go h6 because I'm worried if I take the knight after h6, g6. The queen can't go to f6 yet because the knight can take it, even though it threatens mate. But it kind of glues my knight to the defense of f6, and then my bishop struggles to get out. I suppose I might have moves like f5 and e5 to cover the queen's entrance, but I have no time at all. So I just went h6 with 9 seconds remaining just to try and shore up the position. Queen g3 offers a queen trade. I take on a8, rook a to e1, and I go e5 because I want to play e4 and cut this bishop's diagonal off. Here. I expected rook takes e5, and my opponent given me back the exchange in order to win all my central pawns and try and have a really active position. And that's actually the best way for white to play, which I expected. But he doesn't. He goes bishop f5, and I find the best move, e4. So my opponent can't sack the exchange anymore. If he takes my knight, I take with the bishop, and I'm very happy because, like I said, I'm down the exchange, but I have three extra pawns, and these are some menacing pawns, especially with the king being a bit exposed, with the f pawn gone and the h pawn pushed all the way down the board. Moves like f5, f4, f f3 are going to be quite dangerous in the future. So, my opponent goes queen d6, which I expected, attacking and just invading. So I went knight f6 defending d5 and offering a trade of bishops. If he takes me, this only helps me, because after queen takes c8, I'm looking at some good squares. So he plays bishop h3, which I expected, takes takes with the rook, so that his rook can access squares like g3 to set up potential attacks. I go queen c8, because I need to get my queen back into the game from the corner of the board. I'm also eyeing down the c2 pawn, rook g3, and I go queen f5 check. The reason I don't go queen to c2 was because I was a bit worried about the safety of this knight with the g-pawn pinned. Computer says just take on h5, you're all good, attack the rook. It's very cold-blooded, but this is difficult to play with like no time on the clock. So I went queen f5. Just getting to the defense of my knight with a tempo on the king. King g1. And I now take on h5. I expected rook f1 here, ignoring the threat on the rook because he attacks my queen. And I probably was going to play queen e6 to try and trade like this. And I'm confident I can win this endgame with this massive blob of pawns in the center. These are the four pawns that I'm up. And they're going to be marching down the board very, very soon. So that was my plan. Now, my opponent goes rook b3, which attacks b7. I go e3, because I'm like, look, I can't really defend b7 unless I play a move like queen c8, which is way too passive. My advantage is in my central pawns, so I need to push e3. If my opponent takes, then queen f2 check, picks up the rook, and I'm completely winning. So rook f1 attacks my queen and defends f2. I now take on c2. Queen takes d5 and e2, threatening to take the rook. Even though my knight is hanging, it doesn't matter. So queen takes knight, and this, 
I'm going to push this second pawn through as well. And I'm up three pawns. So even if this pawn falls, I'm up two healthy pawns. And if I can just trade the queens, it's going to be a pretty winning rook end game. So my opponent goes rookie one, stopping my promotion. Queen d2, attacking the rook. And here there's only one good move for white. The move is king f2, defending the rook with the king. And by the way, I have three seconds. My opponent is now down to 14, so it's a bit more equal. More blunders are going to happen, I can assure you. And there is a move that is far better than all the others for black here. And when I was playing the game, I sensed that it was completely winning. Like, I knew it must be winning because it's so dominant, but I couldn't find the move. You know, moves like hit queen e3 don't work because the rook defends e3. And I thought that I couldn't really get this knight in. And I couldn't really play a move like rook e8 because the knight hangs. So, the, the best move is knight f4. Attacking the queen, attacking the pawn, and holding on to d3. And the thing is, the queen defends the knight. I don't think that had really processed in my brain, because a move like queen e4, I think I was just worried that too many things were hanging. But d3, and somehow this setup is absolutely perfect. Because the queen defends the knight, the queen and the knight defend d3, and everything else defends e2. There's no rook b4 to put pressure on the knight, because the queen, well, I can't actually take, but knight takes g2? Wow, the king and the queen are overloaded, because they're both defending a rook. That is insane. That is so cool. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. So this is the setup. And g2 is just really, really vulnerable. Huh. The computer wants queen b4 to try and trade queens, but... Yeah, then you're just going down a piece, I assume. I mean... This is completely losing. I panicked. I had no time on the clock. I played queen f4 with one second left. Because remember, I get two seconds after every move. And it just doesn't work. Now my thought was, if my opponent goes rook f3, I can give another check here. And this could be quite dangerous, because I get on the e-file. And if the king moves, I win the rook. And it's game over. And if my opponent's king moves, then my idea was to play knight g3 and defend the pawn like this, because the king has been taken off of the defense of the g3 square. Apparently my opponent can still trade, but that was my idea. I'll take with the rook, but whatever. Now the problem is queen f3. And I realized my attack had fizzled out because after queen to h4, g3, queen h2, queen g2, I have no attack. So I panicked a bit and I just took. And the problem is that I can't defend the e2 pawn. So I trade and I go knight f6 and I'm like, okay. I am up three pawns for the exchange, but the problem is this pawn is going to fall. I can't defend it no matter what I try. And these queen side pawns are going to be quite weak. My only chances are in my king side pawns if I can get them moving quickly and the fact that I have a knight. Knights are tricky. Even grandmasters make mistakes against knights. So my opponent wins the pawn. I get my king into the center and I find the nice move knight d7 check. So check on the king but it also covers all the entry squares for my opponent's king. So he goes to d5, and I just give another check. And I'm like, if you return to c5, I'm going to check you. Because I'm happy with a draw here. 
it's equal material technically, but my queenside pawns are too weak, and his rook, if it can infiltrate my territory, is going to absolutely clean up. If these kingside pawns were further up the board, let's just say that I get, I don't know, some position like this. Um, then I'm very confident I can win this. Because the pawns are up, I'm going to create a passed pawn, and my knight is going to be actually quite useful because my opponent's rook doesn't have time to try and infiltrate my territory because I'm just going to promote. But I don't have that. This is the position. So I decide, okay, I need to push. G5. King A5. He still can't get in. I'm still control. I'm still controlling all the important infiltration squares, right? So I'm confident I can keep my opponent's king out. And if his rook ever sacrifices itself with a knight to try and win the queenside pawns, my kingside pawns are going to be too fast, especially if I can get moves like g5, f5, h5 in before. So I move my king up. Rook e3, king d6. The problem is actually rook h3, and my h-pawn just can't be defended, but we both missed this. My opponent goes b4. He's fixated on trying to break apart my queen side. I go f5. Again, rook h3 is a problem, but we, we, we both missed this. Rook d3 check. I go king to e6, keeping an eye on my knight. And again, this sacrifice doesn't work, because whilst the king gets in, my pawns are far too quick on the king side. And I'm going to promote before my opponent has a chance to. So, a4, f4, blunders everywhere. We have b5. Here, I actually have b6 check. And if king takes a6, knight c5 forks the rook and the king. I miss this. Instead, I take. And then I play b6. And I did here see the idea that if king to a6 or king to a4, then knight c5 check picks up the rook. My opponent has to play king b4 here. But then I continue to push on the king side. And this is looking more holdable. Because if the king tries to retreat, I have moves like knight c5. And I, I don't really want to play f3. Because this pawn kind of gets a bit stranded. But I can bring my king in. And eventually try and play f3. And break through. And my knight's doing a good job of looking after this pawn. But after b6 check, my opponent goes king a6. And he just, he, he just misses the fork. This, this guy is rated 2300, and even he misses the fork. You've got no excuse. You're not rated 2300. You're not playing 2300s. Knight c5 picks up the rook. And here, there is an incredibly clinical way to win this game. Well, there's actually two. two. Two ways to go about it. Because the problem is, if you get too fixated on the king side, then the pawn can potentially sneak through. But um, you can play knight e5 check, and when the king moves, go knight d7, defending b6. So if the pawn moves, you just sack the knight, and then these pawns are marching forward. Similarly, you can also go knight b4 check, and when the king moves, okay, say so he goes to c5, then knight d5 again keeps an eye on the b6 square, sack the knight, push the pawns, and promote. So after king c6, knight e5, king c7, knight d7, my opponent here realizes that b6 doesn't work because I'm just going to take it. And he's a good enough player to know this is completely losing. And he resign. Well, I think he actually just let himself run out of time because he had like nine seconds left. But effectively, he resigns. And that's the game. I was... <laughs> so happy with this because it was just absolutely mental 
like there was no reason for me to get anything from the game. My opponent, similarly, didn't really deserve to get anything from the game. We both played absolutely horribly. But that's the reality of chess at this level. Like, it's not as good as you think. Sure, we find some accurate moves every now and again. But we play some horrible moves as well. Especially under time pressure. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, then drop a subscribe so you get notified for the next video. Because I'm uploading daily for the foreseeable future. I'd like to see how long I can continue doing it for. And with that said, have a good rest of your day.